Thank you now, Father, for adding to the church daily as such as shall be saved. So one will plant, one would water, and you would give the increase. Father God, we are all being obedient to your word. We're planting, we're watering. So we thank you for being the God of your word, for giving the increase. The unchurched, the unsaved, the untaught. And those that you are calling forth to fulfill the vision here, and that is to seek and to save those which are lost. You said to pray that God would send more laborers into the vineyard. That's our prayer, Father. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, as we open our mouth today, we ask that you would fill it. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the power, with the authority of the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders following and confirming your word. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. You may take your seat. Everybody, uh, get your Bible in your hand and say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am, I am. What, it what it says I am. I can do. What it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubt. I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. A faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go very quickly to Mark 11, verse number 22. We have a lot to cover today. Mark 11, verse number 22, and then we're going to read our foundational text, which is Psalms 5 and 12, and 1 Peter 4 and 10. We kicked off last week with a new series of lessons on living in the favor of God. Everybody say living, living. In, the favor in the favor of God. Of God. One more time, living, living. In, the in the favor of God. Of God. One more time, say living. Living. I want you to get that part. Living, living, living. living. in the favor of God. Mark 11 and 22 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. We've already taught on this a very a much. We didn't say that he to have faith in time, but to have faith in God. A lot of people have substituted God with time. And so... Is based on I'm having faith in the time that it takes uh, to take place and not in God because in God there is no time. Amen. A thousand years is as one day and one day is a thousand years and in God faith is now. So if I believe I receive at the moment that I pray, I don't need to wait on time because I've already received what God said I would have. Amen. So time is not a factor uh, in my believing. Amen. So we talked about living in the favor of God. We said that we need to instruct the believer on how to live in the favor of God so that we will be able to choose to experience the full benefit of the goodness and the kindness of God. Go to Psalm 55 and 12, Psalms 5 and 12 if you're there. And then go ahead and put your finger on 1 Peter 4 and 10. Psalm 5 and 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as a shield. In the Amplified Bible it says, For you, Lord, will bless the uncompromising and righteous, him who is upright and in right standing with you as with a shield. You will surround him with goodwill, pleasure, and favor. In the Message Bible it says, You are famous, God, for welcoming God's seekers. For decking us out in delight. Living in the favor of God. Living in the favor of God is not based on situations or circumstances. Living in the favor of God is understanding who you are and then walking in the benefits that God says we ought to have. Regardless of what I see, because I don't look at things that are seen, I look at things that are unseen, because things that are unseen are more real than the things that are seen. For the Bible said things that are seen are temporal. They can change at any moment. 1 Peter 4 verse number 10 says, As, as every man hath received the gift. Received the gift. If you don't receive it, you don't get it. Now somebody say, if you don't receive it, you don't get it. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. So it's our responsibility as I receive the gift of favor, I minister to you 
on how you should receive the gift of favor. And so the story goes. So everybody should participate in the favor of God. It says, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And we've already talked about the differences of the names or the titles of favor versus the old and the new on last week. And so in the Amplified on 1 Peter 4 and 10 says, as each of you has received a gift, a particular spiritual talent, a gracious divine endowment, employ it for one another as benefits, good trustees of God's many-sided grace, faithful stewards of extremely diverse powers and gifts, granted to Christians by unmerited favor. We've already talked about understanding the multifaceted favor of God is essential for the believer. We dealt with that last week. We dealt with last week the power of getting and understanding of favor of God. We said above all, the Bible says get and understanding. We said in order to maximize our favor in God, we said last week that you have to have an understanding. And to have an understanding, if you don't get an understanding, the Bible said that Satan has a loophole now to steal from you what God gives you. And so that if you hear the word and understand it not, the Bible says, that Satan will come in and steal what you have heard from him. Amen. Then we came back and the Bible talks about he that heareth the word and understand it, you will be able to bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold in the favor of God. Now somebody said, in all you're getting, all you're getting. you better get an understanding. So in other words, God says in one particular scripture in Hebrews 11 and 1 we dealt with last week, said that we have to be stirred up in our faith to receive the favor of God, which brings about expectations. And we said that our expectations control our emotions in a good state or a bad state will determine on how I expect. What is your expectations in God? Amen. If you have great expectations, you have great favor, and you have a good state of mind. Amen. If you have lack of expectations, you will have a bad state of mind because you don't think God is able to bless you. Amen. So we kind of dealt with that a little bit. And we said expectation means the anticipation of some future event which affects my passion and performance, thus determining my ultimate outcome. So we said that if I have a great expectation, it drives my passion. Oh, bless God. If I know God is going to bring me out no matter what come or what go, it drives Amen. me to have more passion to serve God. Amen. If I don't believe God is going to bring me out, if I don't have no expectation of what God is going to do for me, I'll get a bum kind of emotion and I'll feel bad for myself and I'll have low self-esteem and I need somebody to give me approval and talk to me and help me. But if I believe God is going to turn the tables in my favor. It drives my passion. So we dealt with that a little bit. Then we dealt about in Philippians 1 and 22 that as for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. Amen? Then we start talking about misinformation about the favor of God and how people think that the favor of God is really not the favor of God, but they don't believe in the favor of God, but they'll believe in favor from everybody else. But if we would just learn to latch on and live in the favor of God, we'll come out on top. Amen? Amen. All right, and so well, now let's get into some new information. On today, why don't you turn your Bibles very quickly to the book of Ephesians 3, verse number 7. Ephesians 3, verse number 7. Talking about living in the favor of God. See, when you when you live in the favor of God, you, 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 you can't walk around down. Because you have great expectation of what God said he's going to do. Not based on what I see. Not based on what you said. Not based on what they said. Not based on what you heard. Not based on the broadcast. Not based on society. 
but I have great expectation when I'm walking in the favor of God. Amen. That it doesn't matter what you see, you watch God work. No, somebody say, I don't care what you see. Say, I'm someplace, someplace in the future, and I look a whole lot better whole lot than I look right now. And God will give you a glimpse, a preview of a coming attraction that you can play on the canvas of your mental imagination. And as you play that commercial over and 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 over again, it don't matter what you see no more. Because what you see is changing every minute of the day. That will cause you to have some great expectation about your current situation and drive your passion to where you're on your way to. Amen. Ephesians 3 verse number 7 says, Where of I was made a minister. Watch this. According to the gift, the gift of the grace of God, the gift of the grace of God, the gift of the favor of God. There's no way in the world if somebody gives you a gift that you don't have full benefit of it. Unless you take the gift and push it to the side. But a gift is to be benefited from. So walking in the favor of God ought to benefit from it. Amen. I ought to enjoy it to the fullest. Oh boy. All right. The grace of God given unto me by effectual, watch this, working of his power. It's a gift. A surprise. And then God will handle all the details. Facts about the favor of God that must be known. Might want to write some of these down or get the tape. Number one. Counterfeit favor looks like a blessing. But with closer inspection will reveal fraud. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I say this a blessing, but it takes me out of God. Come on. I say this is a blessing. This is the favor of God, but I no longer serve Him. Closer inspection of what you call in the favor of God is a fraud. Amen. Anything that takes you from God didn't come from God. Amen. 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 And so you call it a blessing don't mean it's actually a blessing. Amen. What you call favor may be a fraud. Amen. Something that the devil produced. The devil gave you. But see, God to even take what the devil meant for bad and turn it into good if you walk in the favor of God. Number two, genuine favor will hold up under pressure. It will hold up under intense inspection. Genuine favor, you will stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So that new car won't drive you away from the church. It'll get you to church. Come on now. That job won't take you from your assignment. It will teach you how to better your assignment. That raise shouldn't take you from being a tither, but cause you to tithe even more. Favor will stand the test of time. Number three. Favor is the avenue 
through which God answers many prayers. Favor usually will come before any money comes. And so if all you're thinking about is the money, you're going to miss out on the gift of faith. Because the gift of favor will sometimes even outdo the money. So I should be striving after favor from God and not the money. Because the money will come through the favor. The favor will give you the job which the money comes through. The favor will give you the client that's going to pay you the money that you need. Somebody say living in the favor of God. See, I ought to be seeking the favor of God. Favor comes through time. Because he opens up the windows of heaven, which is doors of opportunity, which is favor. Tithing opens favor for you. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all getting some of this? Amen. Number four. Favor can cause and will cause doors of opportunities opening for you, but it does not cancel out your responsibility to participate when the door opens. So in other words, favor walking in God says somebody will open a door for you to walk through. But when they open the door, you have to walk through and do what's necessary to stay in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get that raise, you get that job. You got to do the work. Amen. You got to show up on time. You got to be committed. Mm -hmm. You have to be accountable. You have to become responsible. God gives you a gift in the church. You now have to become responsible for that gift. Amen. He gives you favor and allows you to rise up in ministry. Now you're accountable to your eyes. Amen. I get more money, I'm accountable. I get a bigger house, I'm accountable. My PG e just went up. Because you got a bigger house. You can't, can't cry about the PG&E well. if you got the bigger house. You become responsible for walking through that door of favor. Amen. God gave you more food that you bought at the grocery store with more money. You become accountable to cook. And not complain about going out all the time. Okay, we don't want to, we don't even want to, we don't even want to. Somebody say living in the favor of God. God will open the door of opportunity with favor, but you have to participate in the accountability and the responsibility of staying where God puts you. God will give you favor with new associates in your life. But they don't play that. Okay. So in order to keep that new associate, you got to change. Amen. I want to be around people that got money. I want to be around people that got some clout. I want to be, well, you got to become accountable now because they don't stand before being late. Amen. 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 Yes. That's good. That's right. That's right. Promotion in the management says you the manager, so you sure not can't be late. And writing folk up for being late. <laughs> Favor brings more accountability. You still want the favor of God? Yeah. Come on, you ought to shout hallelujah. You ought to shout yeah. I still want it because I want to be accountable. When God gives me favor and saves my sin sick soul, I become accountable for the life that I got. That new creation, 
that we become, I become accountable for being new. No, no, they don't become accountable for you. You becomes accountable for you. They're not your problem. You're your problem. They're not your situation. You're your situation. Oh, I, I can't, you know, I can't get folk don't like this kind of teaching, but you know what I'm saying? But this is right to you. It ain't no coincidence that you showed up today to live in the favor of God. Amen. But see, living in the favor of God is accountability. Amen. Responsibility. Amen. Amen. God blesses your socks off. You have to bless somebody else. Because you're blessed to be a blessing. You don't want to be a blessing. You don't deserve to be blessed. Amen. If all you want is that more money for you owing no more, you're not going to do nothing. God ain't thinking about you. Right. He already know your heart. Yes. Whether you're going to pay tithe on that. Amen. Oh, this is some good stuff. Amen. 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 Number five. Favor brings with it a certain amount of jealousy. Uh oh. Amen. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, from folk you know. Amen. Close association. Yes. Your buddy. Yes. Your home girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister girl. <laughs> Brings about a certain amount of jealousy, envy, criticism, and persecution. Do you want the favor of God on your life? They're going to talk about you and your mama. When you get in the favor of God. And all of y'all think y'all something. <laughs> Well, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah, I do think I'm something. And a bag of chips. Because I know who I am. Learned that last week, you know, last four, five Sundays ago. I learned who I am. And I am something in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. So walking in God's favor now, folk, is just automatically not going to like you no more. As soon as I get self-confidence and begin to learn who I am and raise my head up and stick and square my shoulders, because I don't need you no more. Now, folk, man. Because you know who you are. Wow. It's okay for me to find myself. Next time I say, it's okay for me to find myself. As long as I find myself in Jesus. <laughs> but folks going to talk about you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to be jealous of you. And they're going to envy you. Number six. Favor is the leverage. Watch this. For winning at negotiations in the greater than us situations. In a greater than you situation, favor steps in and wins the battle for you. When my credit ain't all right, favor sets it right. For those that need to hear. When I don't have the skills for the job, favor steps in yes. and give me the job anyway because they got confidence that I'll learn it anyway. Amen. Favor steps in when somebody try to kick me out the club and they get kicked out instead. Because <laughs> I never did like a snitch no how. <laughs> Living in the favor of God Amen. shackles you 
to the benefits of what God promised you. Hallelujah. Number seven. Favor can promote and keep you in places for which your credentials don't even qualify you for. Walking, living in the favor of God. Go to, go to Galatians 3.13 because we have to develop our faith to exercise in the benefits of the favor of God. See, the favor of God comes through faith. Doesn't happen automatic. Galatians 3 and 13, quickly, quickly, quickly. It says, Christ has redeemed me, watch this, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, which is us, mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the what? Yes. Promise. Of the Spirit through faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We receive the favor of God through faith. Amen. Amen. Acting on what I believe. Go quickly. Faith principles. Uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to 2 Peter 1 and 12. I'm going to give you some faith principles for receiving the provisions of God's favor and keeping it. Number one is being ever conscious of the promises of God. Being ever conscious of the promises of God. 2 Peter 1 and 12 says, Wherefore I will not be negligent, watch this, to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them and be established in the present truth, it's still my responsibility to remind you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in order to stay living in the favor of God. Because then you can walk right out of the favor of God. In the Message Bible it says it like this. Because the stakes are so high. Even though you're up to date on all this truth. And practice it inside and out. Have you got that far yet? I'm not going to let up on you for a minute. In calling you to attention before it. So in other words God said look. You have to practice this. Become a practitioner of this. Amen. You have to do this. Yes, yes. Not based on what come, what go, what circumstances, what situation. You just have to put your, put, your, put your mind and focus and do it regardless. And then remind yourself over and over and over and over and over and over who you are. And how to walk in the favor of God. Amen. Number two. Go to Romans 10 and 10. You have to now boldly, effectively confess the promises of God. And not nothing else. Oh yeah, my flesh, my flesh want to say something else. <laughs> Actually, uh, my flesh want to say a whole lot of Something else's. <laughs> but but I gotta focus. Amen. Come on now. See, I, I'm crucified with Christ. Amen. Uh, yet nevertheless I live. Uh, but it didn't Paul say, yet not I. But it's Christ that lives within me. And you know what? The life I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and died for me. Jesus. Amen. So from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, my body belongs to God. It's been purchased by the blood of Jesus. I enter into a blood covenant. And I don't mess around when you enter into a blood covenant. See, I know what that means, you know, in the world. 
you get shot. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If you walk out on a blood covenant, if you misuse or abuse a blood covenant, they come get you. Thank you, Jesus. He was like that in the Old Testament. He just opened the earth and just dropped everybody in. One day you here, and the next day you not. You didn't have time to tell nobody. You imagine being at the club. Party over here. And the floor open. And you keep on partying on your way down. Imagine that. You high, you don't even know. You thinking it's an illusion. Oh, this the bro. <coughs> Until it closes up. And ain't no more drinks to serve. And you go through detox. While you inhale. What an astonishing revelation when you come to it. Because all of a sudden, you know how you sober up. Fleshly things and natural things start coming back to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little hot in here, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anybody in here hot other than me? Right, right, right. Amen. Come on now. You sobering up. Uh -huh. Then you want to click your heels and say there's no place oh, like oh, home. Oh. <laughs> Romans 10 and 10 says, with, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth, and with the mouth confessing, it's what? So God says, look, in order to live in the favor of God, you got to keep on saying what God says, regardless of what you see. Amen. Number three, go to James 2 and 17. I have to brave every day in corresponding actions on the promises of God. I have to brave every day. James 2 and 17, you there? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Say anything you want. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Right. You don't pay tithe. You don't go to offering. You don't come to church. You're not forsaken to assemble yourself together. You get it, but you love Jesus. Who says? The Bible said everybody will give an account of their own justice, their own stuff. But a faithful man, who can God find? In the Amplified says, so also faith, if it does not have work, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up by itself, is destitute of power, it's inoperative, and it's dead. So in other words, you can say you're in faith all you want and have no faith works, you're not in faith. It's not going to work. Amen. 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 The Living Bible. So you see, it isn't enough just to have faith. You must also do good to prove that you have it. Faith that doesn't show itself by good works is no faith at all. It is dead yes. and useless. Amen. Number four. How to stay living in the favor of God. Being consistent and focused until the promise manifests. A lot of folks know what to do. They just don't know how to do it long term. When Pastor Friendly taught on focus, he said, you just, you know what to do. You just can't do it long enough to benefit. Hebrews 10, verse number 35. You've you, you got to do this long term. Let somebody say, you've got to do this long term. See, when we, when we holler, when we holler, favor ain't fair, mm -hmm. folk holler that because they get something. <laughs> but then when they lose that something, mm -hmm. favor still ain't fair. Amen. Now, now they ain't saying that no more. 
Because see, favor brings accountability and responsibility. You got to pay for it now. I said you got to pay for it now, they're going to come get it. Favor ain't fair when you drive it off. Favor still ain't fair when the note do. Favor really ain't fair when you got to go to work to get the money to pay the note. At the time, you don't want to go. When you're sleeping, <laughs> don't feel like getting up. Favor still ain't fair. When you worked all last night, I still got to come to church. <laughs> you can't just sleep in on God because favor ain't fair, remember? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Hebrews 10, verse number 35. Yes, yes. Cast not, therefore, away, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Oh, boy. For you in need. That's something we don't want to talk about because I want it now. That's why we got microwaves, instant, everything. I don't even like going inside to pay for gas. I get hot under the collar when the receipt don't print. <laughs> Now I got to go because I need the receipt. But I got to go in the store to get the receipt. Takes me all of two minutes. But I'm mad at the whole industry. I'm hungry and I'm in the fast food line. Fast food. And I ain't got no patience. I ain't at the restaurant where I got to order the food. I just drive through and get it. And I'm mad because I'm third in line. <laughs> and what's going on up there anyway? That's what I want to know. Can you get your food? <sighs> you're third in line, champ. You're going you're gonna to get that hamburger. Hold on. Take it easy. It's going to be all right. And then almost wreck trying to eat that fry while it's hot. Because I ain't got no patience. I tell the whole car. And then the drink spill. Now I'm two seconds from cussing. <laughs> or two seconds after I cuss. <laughs> now I ain't got no drink. <laughs> and it spilled on the fries. Now you know it's proper. We praise you, we, we adore you, we worship you.